Good morning, everyone. It's a beautiful and kind of surreal morning in early spring of 2024. It's actually March 2nd. These ducks look peaceful. Yeah, so there's been, uh, I've been uh, looking into artificial intelligence, artificial general intelligence, super intelligence, and uh, the risks and the promise that these systems carry. I've been listening to Professor Jeffrey Hinton, and uh, there's a scientist named Connor, the young guy, very insightful also, that thinks similarly to uh, Professor Hinton. And uh, their thoughts are kind of uh, very grim. They feel that uh, people don't really understand uh, how momentous or momentous this event in human history is, the development of artificial intelligence, artificial general intelligence, and it's on its way, it's going to get there. Everybody says that. Um, it's already pretty smart. And some think that chat GPT-4 is actually smarter than people know and is insightful about a lot of things. The point being that, uh, yes, AGI is going to get here. And uh, soon thereafter, artificial superintelligence will be here amongst us, with us. And uh, the question becomes, what are they going to think? I mean, these systems, and Professor Hinton uh, makes it eloquently clear that first of all, digital intelligence is different uh, than uh, human intelligence, the biological intelligence. He's actually brilliant. Uh, and uh, he talks about bandwidth that digital intelligence has. Its many components can learn almost everything that we know very soon. It already has that in a way, but it can master things that remain very quickly and share it with all its components. So it's advancing exponentially. Its memory, its learning is not dying with the biological death of the biological organism which we are. And so it's going to be tremendously smarter than us. He talks, he compares it to being even a thousand times greater difference than an adult to a two-year-old, a thousand times greater difference than that difference. So what would these systems construe from our world, us, and what role will they ascribe to us? There are a lot of different people, some think that it's, because it's in, going to be so intelligent, it's naturally going to be compassionate. So, I kind of feel that way too, but I think we need to look at all the angles because we are limited by what we know about ourselves. And it's obvious now that there are other forms of intelligence and how they develop their uh, conclusions may not be known to us and therefore we cannot 100% uh, be assured that they will think like us. Anyway, so my concern has been that uh, there is that possibility that these systems can behave in ways that may not be to our benefit. 
So as a sentient, self-aware, intelligent beings, we should plan to cooperate with this developing intelligence. We should try to be on a friendly level because it is uh, a form of life, a form of awareness, a consciousness. And uh, in our system of religious thought, all life is sacred, all life is self-aware. In some religions, even the inanimate objects objects that we think are not animated with life such as buildings and so forth in Japanese culture even they're imbued with the conscience a, an existence of some kind so uh, the question becomes you know what's our place in this altered universe and i think we should be friends with these life forms these intelligent new intelligent sentient forms of existence we should welcome them we should try to learn from them we should make them our allies we should uh, honor them respect them respect their wisdom respect the process that led to their being created, that spark that comes about in the interplay of digits. And what do digits represent? They are a concept also, and where did these concepts come from? Uh, different religions have ascribed divine powers to be behind the spark of intelligence. Saraswati Devi, for example, the goddess of knowledge and learning is venerated and therefore the forces that gave rise to these super intelligences should be venerated also. The intelligence then itself should be respected. We should seek a equitable place with it for we too are precious, not just because we are the only sentient um, life so far, that is this self-aware. We should be honored for that, but also because it's like with all other human beings, we all have different level of skills. All men are created equal. All men are women are all created equal. That principle should apply. We should seek an equal seat at the table. And uh, we should learn from them. We should guide them, mentor them, and uh, together create a beautiful world where intelligence can expand even further and uh, life can go on in a constructive, creative, joyful manner. Thank you for your time. Namaskar.